What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check it out Fiery Dragons from Hobba Games. This is for two to four players, ages five plus. It'll take you about 10 15 minutes to play. And in Fiery Dragons, you're going to take control of a little dragon and you're going to try and go all the way around a volcano and go back to your cave. I'm assuming you're going to pick up, you know, a sandwich or something like that and go back to your cave. But it's a memory matching game where you're going to be trying to remember where bats are, where spiders are, and where salamanders are on the tiles in the center of the board. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. All right then, we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of Fiery Dragon. So first of all, we are a handy dandy rule booklet. Uh, you're only gonna need about the first two, three, four pages, double-sided, full color, full pictures, illustrations, examples. And it's a weird rule booklet. There is one uh, misprint they have in here which doesn't affect gameplay at all, but it tells you that each of these tiles is either going to have two or three of a symbol on it when in actuality like there's a one spider right there and the rule booklet also talks about how there's like a pressure luck luck aspect like do you dare draw another tile or something like that when in actuality that's completely not existent but i'll talk more about that in pros and cons let's just talk about the gameplay here because the gameplay very simple easy to learn easy to teach and i can probably teach it to you right now so in fiery dragons you are a dragon you're in your cave and you have to walk all the way around this volcano for some reason and then get back to your cave if you're able to do that then you will win the game you're gonna get these really nice chunky wooden dragons my son says they look like a duck a little bit so he calls it fiery ducks either way uh, very nicely done. You're going to set up this board like so. And you're going to have these pieces, which uh, are double-sided, which I didn't really notice, but they're the same on both sides, so it doesn't really matter. And some of the pieces will have this cut out of it right here. That's where you're going to place your dragon den. If you're playing with only two players, then you'll make sure that your dragon dens are right across from each other. And then you're going to set out all these dragon tiles in the middle. In On these dragon tiles, you're going to have skulls, you're going to have bats, you're going to have spiders, you're going to have... Uh, Dragon eggs. Oh, wow. Can I do it? You're going to have salamanders. 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 You're going to have salamanders. Salamanders. So you're going to have five different tiles in here. Now, four of these are not going to hurt you uh, because they're either going to help you move or they're going to end your turn. However, these guys right here will make it so that you go backwards. And you can never go uh, backwards further than your cave. So if I got like was here and I got a negative two, I wouldn't go here and almost win the game. I would just go back here. So... Let's show you how the game works, and we'll talk about a couple of the minor rules that are in the game. So on your turn, what you're going to do is you are going to try and find the symbol of the space where you are. So I'm going to start off, and I'm going to need to find a dragon egg. So let's go, and I would go right here, and I would have three salamanders, so no help whatsoever. Uh, we're going to cheat a little bit, actually, and we're going to say that uh, the white guy was playing, so the white dragon. So, boop, we're going to put him right here. Now, he saw that I flipped over salamanders, and he's like, oh, yeah, I need those salamanders. So he would then flip, God, he'd flip over that one, and he would get to move three spaces. So pretty self-explanatory. One, two, three. Now, the game talks about how there's a pressure luck aspect of if you dare continue, you can continue to flip over tiles. And it's like, well, yeah, obviously I'm going to continue to flip over tiles. The only thing that are going to hurt me are skulls. So I flip this over, and it's a spider. doesn't hurt me at all. I flip over both of these, and then the blue guy's going to go. And he's looking for bats. He saw I just flipped over a bat. I'm really terrible at this game. Actually, he saw that I flipped over a spider, but he wasn't paying attention. So now it goes over to the green person, uh, the green dragon who's still looking for the dragon skull. But anywho, you're going to continue to do this until you get all all the way around the board and back here. Now, as I mentioned, if you flip over one of these, you will actually go backwards two spaces. Boom, boom. Uh, but interestingly enough, even if you flip over one of these, your turn is not over because the rule booklet says you can continue to keep pushing forward and trying to get the symbol you need. So then I got the bat. Now my turn would be over. Uh, some other minor rules are that you can never share a space with a dragon. So for instance, let's say I was right here and this white dragon got a two spider, he would actually not be able to move. Also, oddly enough, if I were to get, say, these two skulls right here, I would not be able to go backwards because then I would be on the same space as him. The rules just mention that you can't share the same space as someone else, and if you do, or if you were about to, then that would end your turn. But anywho, you're going to continue to go around in the circle until you get back to your cave. You have to get back to your cave exactly. So, if I was right here, I would need to get a three bat in order to successfully get into my cave. But once you get in there, you will be the winner of Fiery Dragons. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game's played. Alright then, Fiery Dragons from Hobbit Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to four players, er, restricted player count. 
Um, also, this is a children's game and a family game if your kids are younger. But I will say around probably ages 11, 12, 13, 14, they are going to outgrow this game and they're going to want to play some other spectacular hobby game or, you know, just games in general. Another comment that I have with this game is that when I first read the rules, it created the illusion that there was like this pressure luck aspect to the game where it's like, all right, you successfully flipped over this tile and you get to move one space. Now, if you want to, you can pick up another tile and flip it over. And it's like, yeah, I want to. Every single time. I don't ever see a reason why I would not want to unless, of course, I knew that I had already picked up all three of the bats. Like if you had a bat up and a two bat up and a three bat up and you needed a bat, you'd be like, well, I'm not going to push my luck because I know there's no more bats out there. But for the most part, there is no pressure luck in this game. And the big deterrent in this game are those skulls. But even the skulls aren't that big of a deal. Like, you get a skull, your turn's over. Oh, wait, actually, no, your, your turn's not over. You get to keep going for some reason. And even it makes it sound like if you choose to keep going after getting a skull, yeah, I choose to keep going after I get a skull. Why would I not choose to keep going? I want to move my dragon. I just didn't understand how they worded the rules and how the game worked it just seemed like a really odd design choice i know i'm nitpicking a game made for five-year-olds about design choices but still i have such a high quality uh, standard of quality with hobby games that something like this just seemed a little bit off to me any other cons that i have with the game no no moving on to the pros fiery dragons is a good children's game and i can recommend this children's game now is it one of my favorite hobby games of all time no it's not you know i look over here on my son's shelf i see like magic feathers and space planets and chili shenanigans and animal upon animal and lost safari and rhino hero and ghost blasters and all these absolutely spectacular hobby games that i i love and i plan on playing for years and years and years to come and then i look at this one and say yeah it's a good game it's better than most children's games out there but is it spectacular no it's not it is a good children's game your kids will have fun with it and it does it is a fun game for adults as well especially if you don't have a good memory like i do because it it has this really cool aspect of just being like a snowball rolling down the hill like maybe you're behind but with the way this game is made if you get you know oh i got i got three dragons and you're like oh i got two salamanders and it was like oh i got one spider and you just keep getting the stuff that you need and there's less and less tiles to pick you're like oh man could i actually run the table and get all the way around most likely not because you probably don't have that good of a memory but it creates that illusion that you're never out of the game and i like that aspect i also like the fact that you have to get the exact right number to get into your cave now most of the time i hate this mechanism but in this game i actually like this mechanism because unlike games like say sorry or maybe you have to get a five to get in there you have to get a five or a four and a one or a three and a two or something like that that's completely random but with this it's just you are just eagle eyes like oh man i do not i'm gonna keep my eyes open because if somebody flips over the three spider that's gonna help me get into my spot but at the same time there's a little bit of tit for tat because if somebody else knows where that three spider is even oh though they might need that three spider because they're on a spider they're not going to want to flip that spider over because they hand the game to you there's a little bit more gaminess in this game than you see at first eye and that's why i like this game and recommend this game but as i mentioned it's still a good hobbit game and don't don't take that the wrong way hobbit games are absolutely spectacular is this one spectacular no but it's still a, it's a good game i recommend it and if you have young children i think they're gonna have a lot of fun moving the dragon around and trying to find the pieces and i will say uh i'm really bad at this game and my son my four-year-old son he has beat me quite a few times in this the kids in my class have beaten me at this quite a few times so it's the kind of game where adults and kids can have fun together even though eventually the kids will outgrow the game that's Fiery Dragons, Hobby Games, one that I definitely can recommend if you are in the market for a children's game. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know. Dragon Cave, how much money would I have to give you to go into a Dragon Cave and steal something? Uh, for me personally, ooh, assuming they're the fire-breathing variety, like the huge fire-breathing, like Lord of the Rings style stuff, or uh, you know maybe like Game of Thrones style stuff... <laughs> And I don't even know if there's an amount. It would have to be, it would be have to be like $50 million. I would have to know that I would never have to work another day in my life. I would have to know that I could beforehand charge my charge card and get the proper amount of equipment that I would need to slay slash sedate slash seduce slash whatever I need to do to that dragon to make sure that that dragon is not going to eat me. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, how much money would it take for you to go into a dragon's den and get, you know, a lost 
you know, the shoe or something. I don't know. Whatever you lose, there's dragon's den. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.